Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit every of our young adults unto your holy hand. Father, we pray that as many as are looking up to you in the area of marriage, in the area um, of settlement in marriage, Father, we pray that there will be divine connection in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the grace to wait for you patiently for the appointed time and the appointed spouse. Father, you grant it unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that in the area of marriage, they will not miss it. In the mighty name of Jesus, that bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh, Father, you connect them together in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the grace to wait for you patiently and not compromising in this area father you grant it unto them in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen let's commit every of our seniors unto the hands of the lord that as they are continue to grow they will continue to grow in grace in the mighty name of jesus as they are as they continue to grow in age so that so will be the grace of god in their life in the mighty name of jesus let's commit them to the lord in prayer father in the mighty name of jesus we commit every of our seniors unto your hebrew hand father we pray that they will continue to grow in grace in the mighty name of jesus we pray as they are growing lord we know that earth, there will be some earth challenges. Father, we pray that you strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen their feeble bones in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, con let them continue to work strong in your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, every of our seniors, they will finish well and they will finish strong. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's commit every workers unto the ends of the Lord, that as they are working for the Lord, they will not be worker of iniquity in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to work faithfully uh, unto the Lord, Father, that the Lord will grant it unto them. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit every of uh, our workers unto your holy hand. Father, we pray that the, the grace to work faithfully in your fires, you grant it unto them the strength they need, Father, you grant it unto them. None of us will be worker of iniquity in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to be faithful in every of our callings, Father, we grant it unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for uh, uh, sustaining grace in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's commit um, every of our pastors unto the hands of the Lord. That God will continue to envelope them in his grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. That God will envelope them in his grace. More of his grace over their life. More of his anointing. More of his strength. More vision. That God will grant it unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's also remember their families. That God will continue to keep them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit every of our pastors unto your holy hand. Father, we pray as you have called them, Father, we pray that you back them up with your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will not fall, they will not falter. In the mighty name of Jesus, grace to carry on the tasks that you have placed in their hand. Father, you grant it unto them. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to strengthen them. In the mighty name of Jesus, more of your uh, strength, more of your anointing more of your vision father you grant it unto them in the mighty name of jesus we commit every of their family unto your hand both the wife and the children unto your holy hand father we pray that you continue to keep them in the mighty name of jesus no weapon of the enemy form or fashion against any of our pastor we prosper in the mighty name of jesus you continue to envelope them under your grace in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen Let's commit uh, our geo pastor dada unto the hands of the Lord. As he, he is going up and down for the work of the ministry. He was in Philippines. Last week he was um, in, uh, he came for uh, the youth program. Now he's back again. We pray, let's pray that God will continue to strengthen him in the mighty name of Jesus. The work of the Lord that is is doing in Philippines, he will continue to prosper in his hand. Let's let, let's um, would let's take that to the Lord in prayer that God will continue to prosper the work of God in his hand. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit, Pastor Dada, unto your holy hand, we pray for your enabling grace in the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to continue in this might. Father, you grant it unto you to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Your work that is doing in Philippines, Father, we pray that you bless him with the gift of men, that they will make the work easy for him in the mighty name of Jesus. And the work that he left here behind will not spoil in his absence in the mighty name of Jesus. You continue to prosper his work in the mighty name of Jesus. And he himself will not go after other soul and loses his own soul in the mighty name of Jesus. He's going to finish well and is going to finish strong in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit every member of his family unto the Lord and Father we pray that you keep them in the mighty name of Jesus and envelope them under your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Efficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Sufficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Amen. Today is the 30th day of the month of June. The last day of this month and today we are officially ending the first half of the year 2024 we're going to the next phase by tomorrow the next half of the year brethren is it not wonderful is it not awesome but the lord had kept us and now we are asking for more grace give us more grace we started january 1st it was like yesterday and today is june 30th 2024 we're going we've asked as through our songs that the lord will give us grace more grace much more than he had already given us for the first half of the year we need more grace to be able to continue to be able to follow through during the second half of the year in the book of lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 the bible says and i read it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. We look at the statistics from January 1st till now, you will see that so much water has gone under the bridge, and yet that bridge is still standing. The Lord had been merciful unto us he had been gracious unto us he had kept us those that have gone that have been swept away by some natural disasters i am not sure that maybe we are more righteous than every one of them i'm not sure it may be where we are but whatever it is by his grace that we are standing it is by his, gra his grace that we are still alive today so brethren, let's open our mouth as we give him the praise. For he told the Lord had helped us. Let's begin to worship him this morning. Let's begin to thank him. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this morning. Thank you because of your grace upon my life. Thank you for how you have been able to help me from January till this time. There is no falling away. You have been here today. It's not by your power. It's not by our strength. And it's not because of our righteousness. It's by the grace of God, lest anybody should boast. Our salvation is by his grace. So let's begin to thank God for saving our soul, for counting us worthy to be members of his kingdom. Let's thank him for the opportunity he has given to us to come unto him. So come unto me, all ye that are laboring, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
So let's begin to thank the Lord. Thank him because of the opportunity of the cross. Thank him because of his son that is sent to die for us on the cross. Thank him because of his mighty protection upon us, upon our families, upon everybody around us. Let's thank him because of his mercies upon our lives. Let's thank him because he has preserved our salvation. There are people that started with us today, they are no more. Today they are singing another song altogether. But God had kept us, he had preserved us, he has given us wisdom through his spirit to be able to defeat the enemy. Let's thank God this morning, thank him because he has kept us alive until this day. Let's thank him because he has kept our faith alive until this day. Some people, their faiths are dead. Some people, their salvations are dead, long dead and are buried. But today, our salvation is still alive. Let's thank God for keeping us alive, for keeping our salvation alive. Let's thank God because of his preservation upon our lives. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We thank you, mighty Father because of how you have called us out of darkness to your marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, because of this salvation that you have given unto us free. Your son, your son died on the cross to make this available for us. Otherwise, we will not be qualified to have it. But Lord, you made it available, and then it was free of charge. If this were to be purchased by money, we will not be able to buy it. The rich men of the world would have purchased everything before we even blink an eye. Father, we thank you for making salvation free. Thank you, Lord, because of how your son came to die for us on the cross to make this salvation available for every one of us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your defense upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, because of how you surrounded us by your, with your angels. Thank you, Lord, for our families. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for keeping our salvation alive until this moment. Thank you, Father, because it is of your mercies that we are not consumed. Thank you, Lord, because your faithfulness, they are great and they are new every morning. Your compassions, they fail not. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, because you had not dealt with us according to our transgressions. Because, Lord, you have kept us by your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your compassions that fail not. Thank you, Lord, because great is your faithfulness. We give you the praise this morning. We thank you, Lord, because of how you've kept your church. The devil had tried in the past, we never can tell. All the things he's been doing in the secrets to deal and to pull down your church. Lord, we thank you because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Thank you, Lord, because you have built your church upon the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, because the gates of hell will not prevail against our families. Thank you, Lord, because the gates of hell will not prevail against our salvation. Thank you, Lord, because the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Us. Thank you, Lord, because of your power. Thank you, Lord, because of your grace. Thank you, Lord, because of your compassions in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, who is like unto thee? O oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is like unto thee? O oh Lord, who is like unto thee? O oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness fearful in praises always doing wonders hallelujah yeah. amen that is not like unto our god jehovah that is not like unto jesus the only son of god that is not like the holy spirit so let's give him the praise one more time this morning because there is none like unto him. Let's thank him because if it were not for him, the devil would have had us for breakfast. He would have knocked off our feet. 
he would have knocked down our salvation but he has tried and he has tried and he has tried in vain i mean the devil and everything he tried he kept failing because of the grace of god upon our life and that is not like unto god our jehovah let's give him the praise this morning for how he has kept us for how he has protected us for how he has preserved us he had not allowed the enemy to pull us down he had not allowed the devil to destroy us to have us for breakfast let's give him the praise this morning let's thank him because so many so many people have been swept away have been swept away by the forces of darkness so many people have been swept away by sin so many people have been swept away by the caterpillars of destruction so many people have been swept away by the devil himself so many people have been swept away by sickness people are dying but the Lord has kept us this day the Lord has preserved us let's give him the praise this morning because that is not like unto him Heavenly Father, I will give you the praise one more time this morning. Thank you, Lord, because you have made all the efforts of the enemy against our life to be futile. Thank you, Lord, because the devil had tried in vain. He had tried and tried and has tried in vain. Father, we thank you for our children. Thank you for our, the youths. Thank you for the young adults. Thank you for the adults in this church. Thank you for our pastors, our leaders. Thank you for your servant, our general superintendent that you've been using mightily. Thank you for our regional overseer. Thank you for our resident pastor. Thank you for all the workers in the church. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, because of all the arrows of the enemy that you've diverted from our lives. Thank you, Father, because of all the arrows of the enemy you've diverted away from our families. Thank you, Father, because the enemy had tried with all his arrows and his bullets, and none of them never came near us. Father, we give you the praise this morning. Lord, we thank you because you are the great I am that I am. Thank you, Lord, because there is none like unto thee. There is none beside thee. Beside thee, there is no other God. Lord, we praise you this morning. Father, we thank you because you are indomitable. No power or force will be able to take you down. Lord, we thank you because you have the mighty powers. You are the almighty. Thank you, Lord, this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seated in the seed of the scornful, Brethren, that is why we are here today. We are here to take counsel from the Lord. And we're going to pray this morning that the Lord will give us grace. The grace not to take counsel from the ungodly. The grace not to stand in the way of sinners. The grace not to sit in the seat of the scornful. Let's begin to pray this morning that the Lord will help us as we carry out our day-to-day -day activity. As we start this week, we'll start this week by taking counsel from the Lord. As we start this week, we'll start this week by not taking counsel from the ungodly. That the Lord will give us the grace to say no. When the wicked comes with their pressuring counsel, when they want to inflame us to go the negative direction when they want to influence us to go in the opposite way of the Lord that the Lord will give us the grace to say no so many people today have fallen away from the faith because of some bad friends some bad influencers who want to influence them who try to influence them and they were not strong enough to resist the influence so this morning we're going to pray the devil is pressuring his influence is increasing by the day and he wants to try everything humanly everything possible to take many to him with company to hell so this morning we're going to pray as we pray, we ask the Lord to give us the grace. The grace to say no to the counsel of the ungodly. The grace not to sit in the seat of the scornful. The grace not to stand in the way of the, of the sinners. That today, 
the, the, our delight will be in the law of the Lord. That God will help us, will refresh us, that the word of God will come to us new. Will come to us new and our delight will be in him. And in his law, are we going to meditate day and night? That the Lord will help us, that the meditation of his word will be our priority. As we meditate on his word, and we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters. And bring it forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also, our leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever we do shall prosper. I want us to pray as we go into the fellowship this morning that the Lord will bless us. He will launch out into our lives with greatness, with mighty manifestations of his power and his deliverance this morning and his miracles this morning. Father, we thank you. As we want to start the service this morning, Lord, we pray you start with us. Lord, again, we are grateful unto you for helping us to successfully complete this first half of the year to be the praise this morning. As we start the service, Father, we pray that you will start with us. You will bless us today. You will revive us today. You will renew us today. You will correct us today. You will help us to be, able to be able to stand by your grace uprightly. Thank you, Father. We pray for all the leaders we'll be using today that your mighty power will rest upon them. We pray that your spirit will be released in our midst today and work his wonders. Thank you, Lord. As we begin, we pray you begin with us. We declare this service open in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We shall start the service of today by singing from our Gospel Simpson song, in number 179. 179, higher ground. I'm pressing on the onward way. New hearts I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward band. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land where love and joy and light abound lord plant my feet on higher ground
And the topic is Israel's multiplication and oppression in Egypt. Question 41. We're studying about the multiplication and oppression of Israel in the land of Egypt. Shall we all say that together? Israel's multiplication and oppression in Egypt. I pray that any oppression against us, against our family, the Lord will give us victory over them in Jesus' name. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. Exodus Can we read together? Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. One to go. One more time. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. 
We all knew the story of how the Israelites, they got to the land of Egypt. We knew how the problem of farming pursued them to Egypt. But we thank God that the promise of God that where there are so riches, they will possess that land. And we thank God that we saw how Joseph had been faithful to God. But at this time, we will see that generations have passed and the Israelites they kept multiplying. So we'll quickly go to our um, text. Exodus chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. We'll read all, and then we'll see how God is going to speak to each one of us. Any first reader, please? Exodus 1, 1 to 22. Don't go for your class. Bitter. YouTube. And the king and the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have sa and saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and they are delivered. Uh, the midwives came into them, in unto them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because of the midwives feared God, that he, they made them houses. 22. 22. And, that, and, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born of ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Praise the Lord. Here we saw how the, Egypt, uh, the Israelites were being afflicted. 
uh, maybe in modern language, they will say they have been tortured. And, uh, but the more, according to our memory verse, the more they have been tortured, the more they multiply, the more they work stronger. I was looking at this something. When I, I said at the beginning that many generations have passed, if you look at our fact that another king rose who knew nothing about Joseph. Remember last, uh, last week we talked about the death of Jacob himself, and now even Joseph himself died. We don't know how many generations that passed. I tried to make a little research. As at the time we were speaking, we have about seven pharaohs in Egypt that the issue of uh, Israelites, Joseph, already out of their memory. But now the fear came to the king, and he now commanded that, oh, these people, they are going to take over our land. I think there are some countries now, oh, we will not let people come because they are going to take our land. But God, when they fight for us, he will fight for us in Jesus' name. And this lesson, we see that we are the Israelites of today. And I pray that God will, as he was, <clears throat> as he was with the Israelites of old, he'll be with us in Jesus' name. So we saw that how uh, these, uh, the Egyptians, they tortured them, they punished them, they made them do the hard labor and all the rest, but as God with them. So how do we now bring this into our own life today like i said we are the israelites of today god showed them mercy god showed them favor remember he already told them that they are peculiar people choosing generation royal priesthood i don't know whether you are a royal priesthood in the sight of god in the hand of god and whatever pharaoh in our lives god will give us victory in jesus name so the Egyptians, they put obstacle in their ways to the extent of how to kill their children. But we thank God that even those women that were assigned to kill their children, fear came upon them. Therefore, what lesson are we going to learn? In our own life today, do we have Pharaoh that is tormenting and comforting us from our uh, the text we read, in diverse ways, they punish them. In diverse ways, they torment them. You, as a pastor, as a member, as whatever, whatever, do we have Pharaoh in our own lives today? <clears throat> do we have issues? <clears throat> do we have issues that we confront? by government, by parents. Can we mention some of them? Because here they said they made them to mold mortars, to build their houses, to do everything for them, but they never enjoy it. So in our own lives today, is there any Pharaoh in our life that is confronting us? Any other, any Pharaoh, any issue that we are confronting in your life, in our family? Yes, sir. One of the problems we probably be confront, we as parents are confronted with trying to win souls and also try to like discipline our kids to follow through the ways of God. Praise the Lord. In the military term, there's something we call soft target. Soft target means when the enemy is trying to confront you, when he cannot get you, they will go into a soft target. That's why you see some shootings in America. They go to mall, they go to post office. So in our own lives, when the enemy is trying to take you, he cannot reach you. Like Job, the enemy cannot take the life of Job. What does he do? He turned to his children, turned to his properties. It might happen in our own lives, but I pray that all Pharaoh in our lives today will be defeated in Jesus' name. It might be sickness. It might be financial issue. It might be your children, your family, whatever it is. But God will give us victory in Jesus' name. That is why the Bible tells us, it gives us assurance. 
He said, no weapon that fashions against us will prosper. If we look at this history of the Israelites, it led to their victory and their deliverance. Or anything that is confronting us, the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. We have this lesson in three phases, Israel prosperity and multiplication in Egypt. And then we're going to study about the second part is Israel preservation and mighty in Egypt. Israel prosperity and multiplication in Egypt. How is it that they multiply in Egypt? They, uh, they have prosperity. Remember from our uh, memory verse, the more they were tortured, the more they prosper. So we Christians today, if you are choosing generation of God, you are a real priesthood. Whatever the enemy is putting in your way, in your family, victory will be yours in Jesus' name. Yeah. Because he has told us, that it's good to obey God more than man. You see, when he, um, the king commanded the midwives to kill their children, fear came, <clears throat> fear came upon them, on these midwives, and they said, no, we are not going to kill them. That tells us that we must fear God more than man. That's what Peter said it. Shall we obey man more than God? No. So we too, whatever authority, whatever, um, whatever command, whatever law that is made that is contrary to the will of God, we have to put God first. And I pray the boldness and the power to obey God first, God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. So there's benefit when we obey God. What is it that benefit that accompanying those women, the midwives, in the, in verse, uh, in verse 19, and the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, and uh, the midwives come unto them. Therefore, God dealt with the midwives. In verse 20, therefore, God dealt with the midwives. You too, if we put God first in our lives, we fear God. We say the fear of God is what? It's beginning of life, beginning of everything. So we must put God first in our lives, regardless of the consequence of disobedience to the government. And we see that there are many laws they are passing that is against the, uh, the will of God. So we learn that lesson. And when we obey God, God will definitely compensate us. God will give us victory. God will give us what we want, and it shall be so in Jesus' name. He said, uh, Pastor, he said, Israel persecution and maltreatment in Egypt. We already saw it, how they have been maltreated. In a one case, maybe in your job, I remember I was singing because in my job you can't preach, which is common in America. You can't really talk about it, but I, I was singing. Praise God. I, my, my commander said, no, 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 no. You can't sing here. I said, I'm not preaching. He said, no. I was singing to myself. My commander came.
there in Jesus name so we should not allow anything to take our focus away from the kingdom of God and will not fall short of that in Jesus name and this part we read too we saw that there are many methods the king used and just in our life today there are many things that will confront us as I said before what we call such subject yours might be sickness mine might be poverty the, yours may be a joblessness it can be anything but whatever the obstacle in our lives God will give us uh, will give us victory in Jesus name and finally in our this thing Israel preservation and mighty in Egypt God preserve them and they grow and like I said before according to the promise of God that where, wherever our soul uh, the soul of our uh, shoe, Shari, which I possess it. We are, going, we are going to possess the land in Jesus' name. Uh, but it's not going to be this uh, physical land. The kingdom of God that has promised us, Jesus promised us, and then by the grace of God, we will not miss it in Jesus' name. But the key thing here is the fear of God. If we fear man more than God, we will lose it. But by the grace of God, will not fear man more than God because the word of God stands for sure. And whether heaven and earth pass away, the word of God will never The Bible tells us that he that will live for Christ Jesus shall face what? Shall suffer persecution. So we should not uh, fear persecution or Pharaoh in our lives more than God because at the end of the day, we are going to re uh, reap the walls in Jesus' name. And whether Satan likes it or not, we will work stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So that's the end of our short uh, story today of our teaching. But the key word is we must not obey man more than God, just like the, uh, wife, the midwives. And if we obey God, God has things in stock for you and me, and we will not miss it in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our heads and ask God, Lord, I want to fear you more. I want to obey you more, more than any law more than any uh, policies, more than anything that is against your way. I want to obey you to the end because it's not about hearing the word of God, but it's about doing the will of God. And then remember, any obstacle that is confronting you, any force, any power that is confronting you, lay it before God and say, Lord, today, give me victory. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. We are asking, O Lord God, that the grace to fear you, to obey you, you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. And the reward of, of those that fear and obey you at the end of the day will not miss them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's go to our seat. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there will be no review this morning because of um, 
uh, pastor would like to address the church. So we really need to cut some things off. So the praise and worship can come up now. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. He is faithful. That's why we have come to sing of his goodness. We have come to sing of his kindness. We have come to sing of the wonderful things he has been doing. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Our voices give God the praise. He deserves all our praise. He deserves our worship. 
Lord, we have come to your place. We have come to worship. We have come to exalt you. You the King of kings. You the Lord of lords. We have come to you, our refuge. We have come to you, our great helper. We have come to you, our healer. Can we just lift up our voices and worship this God? I don't know what he has done for you. I don't know the things he has been doing for you. The one thing I know is that he is good. He is kind. He is wonderful. He is excellent. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen. Here. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Ah! 
somebody come and see what God has done for me. Let me tell somebody, come and see. Can I hear those hands? Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing you cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see that Jesus is good. He's the King of heaven. Stand and see. Come and see the Lord. Everybody come. The King of Heaven, let us see, come and see the Lord is good. Ah, He give me victory, He even give me peace of mind. Come and see, come and see, yeah. come and see the Lord, everybody come and see.
know, we are, we are, we are God's property. He owns our spirit, our body, everything. That's why we have come this morning to, to tell the Lord, you own me. I am yours. I am yours for life. I am yours for life. I am yours for life. I am yours for life, Jesus. I am yours. I am yours. Lord Jesus, you hold my heart. I am yours. I am yours. Lord Jesus, you hold my heart. I was singing.
He does not own us. Our lives are hidden in Christ, in God. We are your, we are yours forever. Even when you are sick, just know He is still yours. He owns your soul, your body, and your spirit. He owns your soul, your body, and your spirit. time I am yours I am yours Lord Jesus Lord Jesus you are my help. can we give a mighty hand clap to Jesus he deserved those claps he deserves our club offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. The Lord owns us. And we thank him because of his goodness and mercies over our lives. So I want to see that smile on your face. Today is the last day of the month of June, right? And this officially ends the first half of the year. So I want you to give a round of applause to the Lord Jesus for taking us through this time as we worship him through our clap offering. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly welcome those that are worshiping with us for the first time. I don't know if we have anybody here that is worshiping with us the first time you are here could you please signify by raising your hand so that we can bring you warm greetings this morning hallelujah amen brethren if you wouldn't mind could you rise on your feet as we bring some warm greetings to you this morning could you rise on your feet if you wouldn't mind so church what do we say you are welcome in the name of the lord you are welcome
Lord alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just heard that somebody just walked in. We can also extend our hands of fellowship to that sister coming in. So we have four people today. So brethren, if you wouldn't mind, could you rise on your feet as we bring the mic to you? We just want to know your name. Yeah, you can rise on your feet and let's know your name so we can address you properly. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my name is Joel Omage. Um, I reside in Boston. Yeah, that's where I'm based. I work as a scientist. I just came for uh, my mentor's dad for the party, and that is why I'm here. And I decided to fellowship with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, my name is Elisha Azobo. I'm my full name was Finye Isi, and normally I'm I reside in Pennsylvania, and he's my friend. I came with him to Maryland. So, Amen. Okay. My name is Eleni. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Daphne Wong, and I'm just living up the street. I happen to pass here. Hallelujah. And I'm looking. I said, if I live in this neighborhood, I need to know where the churches are and so I walk past each morning and I said I know a church used to be on the street is it still open so I have, I have my church home but I said I, I well I wouldn't tell you what's going everything that's going on but guess what I said I want to be something be near something closer home amen <laughs> Praise so the I Lord. Just, I just happened to walk out this morning and I'm looking around. I said, I have to find this church. However, I'm glad to see I have a lot of sisters here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. And we're happy to have you here. We pray that the Lord who had brought you here will plant your feet upon the solid rock in the name of Jesus. We want to quickly take some announcements from the media team. Thank you. Sunday and welcome to church. This is Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C., and we're so glad you fellowshiped with us today. Listen up as we share what we have coming up this week. On Sundays like this, we start with our pre-service prayers at 8.30 a.m., with our service starting promptly at